No, we're not really supposed to do that. I gotta edit that out. That's not good. You did that, right. I did this. <laughs> Hey everybody, uh, uh -huh. Bill Murphy here with MMORPG.com talking with Brian Wheeler, the lead PvP guy over at Elder Scrolls Online. That's lead PvP guy, does that lead, sound right? Lead PvP, lead, lead Insano. Lead PvP, lead, Captain Insano. Yes. Captain Insano. Uh, all right, well, here we are at E3. You guys can't hear it, but it's absolutely insanely loud right it's here. Loud. Like Wolfenstein is blasting, but who cares about that? We're here to talk about Elder Scrolls Online. Yes, sir. We're going to get the hard question uh, out of the way right at the front. Okay. Now we're talking spring 2014 release, right? Yep. Why? Uh, well, we've been in closed beta for a while now. Okay. The feedback we've been getting from that, as well as just our internal feedback, we know there's more to do. Okay. And we want the Elder Scrolls game to be the best Elder Scrolls game possible out there, as opposed to just being, well, we punted it out. I don't want anybody to think we punted it. I don't want anybody to think we skimmed on certain things. Uh, playing through beta, playing through our closed test, playing through the PvP and PvE, all of it we're seeing like, we want to polish it, we want to make it better, we want to make it uh, as best of an Elder Scrolls game as possible. Yeah. And we obviously want it to be online, yeah. so we have to make sure that all the features work for single players and multiplayer. So there's just a lot of the things we've been doing is playing the game and now, seeing we want to do more with it. Is it going to be a simultaneous release when it comes out on the consoles as well then? It'll be, we're shooting for all of them to come out in the same time frame. I can't promise whether it's all going to be on the same day or not, okay. but we are trying to get to make sure that uh, PC, Mac, Xbox One, as well as PS4 are all the best Elder Scrolls games out there, and there's no one version that's better or not. It all will be high quality across the bar. So they didn't really have anything to do with having to delay it, it's more the core game. No, it okay. was just flat out, you know, as we're playing the game, we're like, we want to add more to it, we want to make... Uh, we want to add more skill lines or we want to add more characters on your screen of MVP. We want to make the game run like as smooth as frame rate as we can. So it's just all the feedback we've been getting. And it's like a polish. It is you, are you, would you say you're like content complete and just in the polishing mode now or is it more? There's still some work to be done, but there is some polish work occurring right now as yeah. well. Like in my space in Cyrodiil, the guys are going through adding lore books all over the place, so there's stories scattered all throughout the yeah. area. It's not just, well, I went to a cave and there's oh, some monsters in here. There's a there's a book in there which explains why goblins have moved into yeah. this. Well, let's talk about let's talk about Cyrodiil, uh -huh. and that's like the core PvP. As as people that may or may not know, there's not going to be like arena and battleground PvP in right. ESO. The PvP is all about Cyrodiil and this ABA Alliance versus Alliance conflict. <laughs> um, and one thing that I, I always think of when I think of this massive conflict, I, you know, I harken back to Dark Age of Camelot, you might be familiar with it, but I also think about Warhammer and how Warhammer had these, these great hopes and great designs that didn't quite come to fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And how are you going to avoid those sort of pratfalls and like make AVA a truly rich experience that people that remember Dark Age of Camelot can look forward to? The, the great thing about uh, Cyrodiil is that the PvP is mixed in with PvE stuff to do, uh, there's Coral, Jaden Hall, Bruma, as well as some other towns in the south, Blasters and Cropsford. These are towns which have NPCs that need help. They need they need to do quests for them. And that gives people like me, a PvPer, somewhere to go hunt. Like if there's nothing going on at a keep, God forbid, but if it's like, you know, 6 a.m. and everybody's going to work, I want to go find somebody to fight. Odds are, if they're not at a keep or they're not at a resource blind keep, they're probably doing quests you or they may be in a cave. Yeah. So I know where to go to find them. Uh, the other great thing about Cyrodiil is it's, it's all linked together. It's not like one zone, then one zone, then one zone. It's all one thing, one clumped area together. Yeah. So it's not like I'm zoning from the Aldmeri portion into the Daggerfall How portion. How big is it, like, comparatively to the rest of the game? Like, uh, it's roughly... It's a huge chunk of the map. Yeah, I'd say it's, like, roughly nine zones big. Like, if you're, if you're running it. around in, uh, in Glenumbra, like people are doing here, yeah. it's, like, nine times the size of it. Wow. So it's huge. Yeah. So it's uh, let's let's put it this way: If uh, are you at all worried about pulling the PvP action apart by having too many, you know, too few people in sparse areas, or is there going to be something in the game that makes sure that people know where the action should be happening? You'll you'll know where action is when you look okay. at the map. You can see uh, you can see that if the keep is under attack, it'll have a little uh, splash behind it. Okay. Uh, if transit lines are cut, the line which connects them kind of goes dash. So you're like, oh well, nobody can transit to that. Let's hit it. Um, where there's a killing occurring, if like you kill me and a couple other people kill you, 
little cross swords will appear. That It'll be right the there. color of the two alliances going at it. If yeah. another alliance adds in, it adds another sword to it, and it gets bigger and bigger up to the three stages or so. Yeah. So you know how big a fight it's going. Do you know, uh, you might have talked about it before, how many people are going to be on a single map of Cyrodiil, like in one at one point? Uh, we're pushing for, you know, in the thousands to yeah. be in Cyrodiil at once. We're pushing for on your screen 200 at a very smooth break okay. rate. Uh, we want to try and get that stuff nailed down so where uh, if I can get above 200, I'll take it. Uh, in the video that's up there, I mean, you saw it too, yeah. people flooding over the wall. That was. 200. That was back in October that you showed us that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we actually filmed that yeah. last year for, yeah. for either last year. So yeah. we've been doing those large fights for a while, and we're still trying to push the, push the technology, push the graphic settings to make it so that more and more people can fit on your screen as well as in serial. What happens when somebody gets, uh, when, when there's too many people on that map then and you've capped it out, what happens to somebody who wants to jump in then? Will they be like, oh, you're in a queue? There'll, there'll be some form of uh, a queuing mechanism unless you get into a, a specific campaign or yeah. a serial campaign. If you belong to one, you'll be able to queue in to get into it. Uh, okay. if, they, if you are a guest in another one, we allow you to have several options for where you want to play in Cyrodiil. Okay. And God forbid if yours was full and your guest was full, we'll still put you out there and get you into Cyrodiil. There's never going to be a case where I can't PvP if I want to PvP. All right, excellent. Uh, we're going to make sure that if you know you sign up for a campaign which is always loaded all the time, you can switch off. So we won't. We always want people to be able to fight. Well, we let's, don't want a queue in this situation. Let's talk about that because you just touched on something that we haven't really heard much detail about the campaign system for ABA. Brief overview without getting too technical. Go. Yeah, a very brief. <laughs> brief. Um, there's basically, uh, there's lots of Cyrodiil's up and running. How many are going to be up and running, we still need to determine that. Okay. Uh, but as a whole, you sign up for a campaign, campaigns have a set duration, but when the duration ends, the keeps and all the resources, they don't flip. They don't go to zero. Yeah. They still persist. So there's a score that occurs between the campaign start and end, which determines basically your rewards. If you're number one in the campaign in terms of your alliance getting the most points, you're gonna get a very good reward. And then are you the emperor, or is that? that... Emperor is another system, uh, actually. Emperor right. is a different leaderboard system okay. entirely. We'll talk about that too. Um, but as a whole, the campaigns work where you assign yourself to a campaign. Mm -hmm. You're also gonna assign yourself to a campaign guest, and then that lasts for 24 hours. It's sort of like, you know, I can get on this roller coaster for yeah. the next 24 hour type of thing. Uh, you can reassign that at will. For your assigned campaign, you have a set, um, you know, I signed up for this one. I can choose to go to another one. It'll cost me alliance points to change. It's just a matter of when you change and how much those alliance points will cost you to okay. do so. Because we don't want to run into the case where there's like a guild of 500 people saying, all right, we're going to jump from this one to this one to bomb it. Yeah. Like there has to be some. We're sick of getting beaten in this one. We're going to all right. jump we're, over here. And to do that, you need to yeah. pay alliance points to do it, or you need to wait. Yeah. If you wait to the end of the campaign, it'll be a little bit cheaper. What's the, so you said 24 hours, but how long could a campaign possibly stretch on? Uh, theoretically, my yeah. programmer has said it's somewhere in the vicinity of, he gave me some silly years number, and wow. I was like, we don't need to worry about years. Months, maybe? No. <laughs> it was like, you know, 50,460 some years. I was like, okay, we're not going to go down. And at the end, you get awesome rewards if you're yes. Alliance. Now, now, if you're a, if your Alliance performed well, but maybe you didn't help out that much, you're not going to get as many rewards. Yeah, so. there's various grades of reward okay. within the first, second, and third tier of how your Alliance did. Okay. Uh, there's also like a minimum amount of Alliance points you had to earn to be able to qualify for those rewards. So you can't just like snipe a reward. I signed it up and now, oh, these guys hey, won. Hey, I got a reward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there, right. is a, there is a minimum amount that you need to, to earn okay. within that campaign that you're assigned to to get the reward. Okay. Um, what else has been added lately? I know we, we just talked about we're pushing things back so and you're polishing and adding and, mm -hmm. and just kind of iterating on everything. So what else in terms of PvP have you guys been putting in recently? Uh, recently we got in uh, leaderboards mm -hmm. which track how, much, uh, how many alliance points you've earned during a campaign. But we can also, those leaderboards update constantly. Yeah. So you can see where you're doing within your alliance, where you're doing within the campaign. Uh, this is all within a campaign, by the yeah. way. Um, which, how you're doing in classes, and you can look at that across alliances. So can I can you see compare yourself like to your guild and stuff like that too. Uh, there's no guild comparison, oh, darn. I love but that. there there is the concept. Love to be at the of, bottom of that list no. every time. Yeah. Uh, we do. It does track uh, in terms of what we're going to show on the screen. Top 100, but I mean there can be more than obviously 100 people in okay. an alliance assigned to a campaign. Yeah. We'll show where you rank overall uh, within the class or within uh, 
the campaign as a whole or within your alliance. Okay. And that class comparison is cool because it shows you best Dragon Knight between all three alliances nice. in the campaign. Not we just you well. know best Old Mary yeah. one or best Dagger one. Uh, that actually worked out great because we did a, a test on Friday, mm -hmm. right before we came out here. Uh, it was about uh, 200 to 230 of us, I think, that were signed in, all fighting over this one key. And then uh, when we were done, I spat out the results of the alliance points. And people were all sending emails back and forth, oh, I was number one on this, oh, I was number one on that. So now it's really when you build cool. in Twitter and Facebook to your social platform, oh, that and that'll work, yeah. That'd be crazy. Um, all right, well, I think, is there anything else you guys want to, that you, that you want to get out there about PvP right now before we wrap this up? Because I know you got a million other appointments to go to. A, a lot of it is just, you know, to go along with the polishing and iteration yeah. state, uh, a lot of the things we're doing, people don't really concept that there's PvE to do in there as PvP. Yeah. And, and we want to do that because, A, I want a lot of people to come in there. Yeah. But also, me as a PvPer, I'm going to go there not only to kill people, but if I get, you know, there's, you, Something get, to you do. get tired yeah. every once in a while doing PvP all the time. So you need, you can do some quests. You can, well, you I can think a lot of our users, when they when they think about ESO and they think about ABA, they think it's going to be like maybe Warhammer's RVR, where you go in there and there's nothing and to there's do nothing unless to you do. unless you fight each other. Yeah. They don't realize that there's actually going to be a whole other world yes. to adventure in. Yeah, Will there be like quests and everything too? Yeah. No? There's, there's yeah. quests, public dungeons, public dungeons uh, the, that's the, great. the Mages Guild books, mm -hmm. the Dark Anchors that you see in the PvP. Those are in the Zero Deal yep, too. They're all there too. That'll be crazy. So People fighting over those. It's awesome yeah. to see, like, in Bruma, we have a dark anchor slammed in the middle of Bruma. Yeah. So people kind of see it and they, they go towards it. And you see another alliance fighting there, like, oh, I'm going to jump in and kill them. And then, then it turns into this crazy battle where they're fighting each other in there. Now, you, um, you, can't, you can't loot somebody's exact corpse, like, take their gear. But can you loot somebody and get, like, some coins and, like, random drops? Have uh, you thought about that? You get alliance points from alliance killing points players. From killing. So that's but your it's currency. Not like, yeah, it's not like I'm grabbing it off the okay. player. You get it. And then you could go system. spend it at, like, an alliance vendor, that kind of thing? Yeah, uh, you can spend your alliance points on armor, weapons, as well as other things like uh, siege weaponry yeah. and uh, various types of things. Like um, like potions, like and potions stuff, and like stuff. stuff you can use. Consumables that's only for ABA. Yes. Okay. And now, what about? Uh, see, I just had more questions. Progression and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. How does that work in ABA? We, we, we were almost done, and then oh, I had oh, more. Too many other things. All right. So, like, could I, I just go in there and yeah. you get automatically scaled up, right? Yeah, you can but go into level ten. Will I be leveling? Uh, you can go into level ten. You'll yeah. still earn experience yes. from killing players. You get experience from uh, capturing keeps, doing the quests, obviously. Uh, we have a whole suite of PvP quests that you can do. Okay. So there's things like, you know, go kill 20 players, go go capture this farm or yeah. bummer mill. Uh, we also have scouting quests, which one of the great things about scouting is it promotes foot traffic out there. Yeah. So again, as a PvPer, if I'm running around there trying to find people, just find there's those a solo legs. person, just I want to scout this farm and get the hell out of here, I may find somebody doing that in my territory. Yeah. So there's uh, ways to level up your character besides just doing the PvE things Yeah, well. you don't necessarily have to focus on the adventure. If I want to be hardcore PvP all the time, just I go to Zero Dill. Level. After level 10, which yes. is like the, the starting zone sort of level. Yeah, yeah, level 10 is about where we found you have a good amount of abilities, mm. a decent set of gear, and you kind of have a good grasp of the combat by that point in yeah. time. We didn't want to put you in too early, because if you come in at level 5 and you only have two abilities, that's, that's really much. not enough to compete. You can at least hold your weight in there, even if somebody at level 50 is going right. to be able to knock you around. Yeah, we, we've actually had, a, I think I've said this before, level 50s have kicked my butt as a 10, yeah. and I've kicked level 10's butts as a 50. That's so good. It's, it's pretty fun. Now, pretty okay, crazy. one more question. Preference for uh, ABA combat, third person or first person view? What's better? Oh, man. Uh, third person while I'm roaming around. Yeah. First person when I'm in a tight quarter place, like when I'm like looking down from a gatehouse and a key. Ranging somebody? Yeah, like looking down through through a, a grate into the people that are ramming the door. Yeah. I'll be in first person view firing a bow or firing my staff. And will we see, is the bow and staff on play here right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah bow and yeah, staff yeah, you can play here. See, that's one thing I didn't get to see in October and now I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, right. bow and staff, you want to have that on backup. Absolutely, and yes. you want to have first person view because it's just easier and it's more so, hardcore. Yeah, you can just look straight down and like in the gatehouse, there's yeah. a grate down there and you can see the people Go operating right through the, the bars. Rams. Yeah, that's awesome. Pouring oil through. Oh, that's so good. Well, thank you, Brian. Sure. Appreciate it. No problem. Looking good. Thanks. Thank you.